clear to me it was a very large cardiovascular outcome trial and it differs from the two previous trials with a SGLT2 inhibitor. It included a very large number of people who didn't have existing atherosclerotic disease. Now we do know from data, cohort data from the United Kingdom, that often now the first presentation is with heart failure. Uh, and in this study, the people that got dapagliflozin had a significant reduction in heart failure. So it tells us that this is a drug which we can give to people who don't yet know they've got vascular disease and it will reduce the onset of what's a very serious outcome. The investigators for the DECLARE study looked at the results of the previous SGLT2 inhibitor studies and decided that they wanted particularly to focus on heart failure as being a very important outcome. Uh, so they changed the outcome, instead of having MACE as the single outcome, they had what's called co-primary outcomes. They demonstrated a clear reduction in the heart failure. There was a numerical reduction in MACE, but that itself didn't reach statistical significance. But actually it probably was underpowered statistically for that as a single outcome. There's a lot of interest in what the mechanisms of benefit of the class of drugs might be. There are major hemodynamic effects. And of course, if you've got heart failure, then that's where you're going to see early benefit. People who've got atherosclerotic disease often develop heart failure a bit later. So I think probably this is the same mechanism of benefit. It's just this study is more clearly demonstrating the heart failure benefit, whereas other studies have shown more clearly the MACE benefit. But I think overall it's the same mechanism of action. And of course the mechanism of action is not fully understood and now lots of uh, basic clinical investigation, clinical science studies to try and tease out what might be contributing. Well, the ADA and the ESD have brought out a consensus statement. They say after metformin, consider the presence of atherosclerotic disease and then head towards an evidence-based SGLT2. In this study, the more of the benefit was in people who didn't have established atherosclerotic disease. But of course, the, guide, the consensus statement did talk about using it for other reasons, like where weight reduction is an issue, or where you're trying to avoid hypoglycemia. And many of our patients were using the SGLT2 inhibitors for, for those purposes. I don't think we're going to get another randomized controlled trial that would look entirely at people with uh, low risk. But that's where perhaps some of these large databases can come in, where you can identify people from insurance bases, uh, databases. In the UK, there's a lot of well-structured databases where you can identify people who don't have uh, any known vascular disease and see if you, you get the same sort of results. So I think there are other ways of really finding confirmation. But for me, the, the best evidence is the, the gold uh, standard, which is a randomized controlled trial. So for these type of things, so-called real-world evidence, I think we'd be looking for supportive evidence, but not novel evidence. From declared to me, the most important thing is that they had such a large group of people who did not know they had vascular disease. And if we translate that into clinical practice, if we really want to be very scrupulous about following evidence, if we've got somebody in front of us who's known to have atherosclerotic disease, then we might use empagliflozin or canagliflozin. If we've got somebody who doesn't have established vascular disease, then I think now we're more likely to head towards dapagliflozin because we've demonstrated uh, benefits in that group of subjects. I think the important thing as well was that there was no uh, new side effects were identified and that there was no increase in either amputations or fractures, which we saw with the CANVAS trial and CANAGLOFLOS. And so I think it's that they've studied a group of people that's different and they've got a clearer, clearer benefit in that group. Uh, and nobody's going to do that study again. So I think it, it, we're likely to use it more in the primary, so-called primary prevention cohort and in the secondary prevention cohort, we we'll tend to use more empagliflozin. Because of the accruing evidence in people with existing vascular disease, they've gone more towards a renal group of patients. So I think their study sits halfway between a renal study and a cardiovascular outcome study. Um, but I think it will be 
ethically quite a challenge to see whether you can really keep going with a study in the face of accruing evidence when we think about the credence trial is going to give us more specific renal data uh, next year. So I think they'll have to be careful and it will mean, will mean the data and safety monitoring group will have to be closely watching the, the results of the study.